Island of Sand. After a long, hard swim, Pedro Serrano fell onto a beach, tired but alive. There was no sign now of his broken ship, lost under the waves. He waited for other sailors from the ship to arrive on the island, but no one came. The next morning, Serrano looked around the island that saved his life. It was a good size, a walk of many hours from one end to the other. But it was made of sand. There were no plants on it, no pools or rivers. His new home was a desert. All hope now left him. It was the 1520s. Spanish ships visited the Caribbean regularly, but the ocean was very big and this island was small and unimportant. He probably had a wait of many years before any ships passed his way. My friends from the ship were lucky, he thought. Their deaths in the waves were quick. He could imagine his own death on this desert island, slow, painful, lonely. But he pushed away these fears. He needed food and drink, soon. After some searching, he found some shellfish and insects. He ate them uncooked. He had no way to light a fire. Later that day, Serrano saw some big turtles climbing out of the ocean onto the beach. He ran towards them and quickly turned them onto their backs. Their legs danced in the air. He cut into their skin with the knife that he always kept in his belt. Then he drank their blood, thirstily. He cut the meat out of their shells and dried it in the sun. Later, he used the big shells to catch rainwater. Maybe he could survive on this desert island. After a few weeks, he had plenty of dried turtle meat and water. He now wanted a fire. Passing ships won't rescue me if I can't make any smoke, he thought. Sometimes the waves carried wood to the island, but how could he light it? At home in Spain, he could start a fire with stones and a knife. But here, he had no stones. Was a fire impossible? Not for Serrano. He swam out from the island and looked underwater for stones. Day after day he searched, and finally, success. He found a good pile of stones and carried them back to the island, a few at a time. He broke one against another until they had sharp corners. Then he cut part of his shirt into small pieces. He held his knife under the pieces of shirt and hit it again and again and again with the stones. This lit the pieces of shirt and the shirt lit the wood. At last he had a fire. He fed his fire carefully with things from the beach. He built a shelter with the largest turtle shell to keep the rain off it. Now he just had to wait for a ship. He did not have to wait many months. He saw one ship and then another. But the smoke from his fire did not bring anyone to the island. Maybe no one saw the smoke or maybe they were too afraid of the dangerous rocks in the area. Months passed, then years. Serrano began to lose all hope of rescue. About three years after his arrival on the island, Serrano was asleep. It was a quiet night. There were no signs that his life on the island was changing. But unknown to Serrano, a ship was in trouble not far away. 
Soon it was destroyed on rocks. Its only survivor swam to Serrano's island and in the morning saw the smoke from a fire. My friends from the ship are here too, he thought happily, walking towards the smoke. But the sailor did not find his friends. He found Serrano, a strange animal, like a man but wild, without clothes and covered in long hair. He was very scared. When Serrano saw a man coming towards him, he was scared too. He's a trick of the mind. I'm going mad, he thought. He ran from the sailor, crying, Help me, Jesus! When the sailor heard the word Jesus, his fear of the wild man left him. Come back, brother, he called. We are of the same religion. But Serrano didn't stop running. The race continued for some time, but finally Serrano accepted that the man was real. He realized that they were both in the same hopeless position. He threw his arms around his new friend and tears ran down his face. In the following months, the two men lived together. They passed their days looking for food and firewood. They organized their shells of rainwater and, most importantly, they watched the fire day and night. If the fire goes out, no one will ever rescue us, explained Serrano. But soon they had a disagreement. Each man felt that the other was not doing enough of the work. Angrily, they decided to live in different parts of the island. For months they did not speak. Finally, though, they realized their stupidity. They made friends again and lived together for the next four years. Other ships passed, but still no rescuers came. They decided that their only future was on their lonely island. Often they hoped for death. But then, when all hope of rescue was gone, a ship saw their smoke. The ship sent a boat to look around. The two men danced in excitement as the boat came near. The sailors on the boat started to worry. What were these crazy, hairy things on the beach? They turned their boat around away from the danger. Just in time, Serrano and his friend cried, In the name of Jesus, help us! Less scared now, the rescuers came for them. Soon, the two hairy men were enjoying food and drink on their rescuers' ship. They told everyone the story of their adventures. It felt wonderful to have company again. Sadly, for Serrano, his friend died on his way home to Europe. But Serrano arrived safely in Spain. He became quite famous for his adventures and he died a rich man. <laughs>